Good morning, 222. How are you this fine Saturday morning? Today we're going to dig into how we honor Jesus. How do we actually do it? Last week we talked about why we should honor Jesus. This week we're going to talk about how we actually go about the process. I'm excited about this lesson. It brought um, a lot of learning for me as I prepared it, and I hope it'll bless you in the same way. Jesus told us how he honored God, which would serve as a model for us when he said in John 5 and 30, I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I don't seek my own, but the will of him who sent me, the will of the Father. So what Jesus was saying was, I want to do God's will. So it seems to me that it's fairly simple, not easy, but fairly simple to recognize that for us to honor Jesus, we need to do his will. So <clears throat> Jesus told us plainly in John 14 and 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now I'm going to tell you a bunch of other things today, but frankly, if you get that part, you'll recognize it. If you love Jesus, you will keep his commandments. It's just that simple. Again, not easy. We fail, but nevertheless, that is the standard. That's the scorecard. That's the way we need to work at it. Psalm 69, verses 5 and 6, tells us this. We want to, it gives us insight into how we should honor, not shame, Jesus. We're going to talk more and more about honor and shame, but... Honor Jesus is about uplifting him, glorifying him, whereas shaming him is pretty clear. It's bringing disgrace to his name, and we never want to do that. So it said, O God, it is thou who does know my folly, and my wrongs are not hidden from thee. May those who wait for thee not be ashamed through me. May those who wait for thee, O God, not be ashamed through me, O Lord God of hosts. May those who seek thee not be dishonored through me, O God of Israel. When I have had problems in the past with officials, one of the things that has always dawned on me and I've had to deal with is I am a Christian. They know I'm a Christian. And if I behave awfully, then what is there that would entice them to ever want to come to know Jesus? Our behavior matters. Our obedience to Christ absolutely matters. So why don't we keep Jesus' commandments? I mean, if we know that that's what we ought to do, why don't we do it? Well, for most of us, it's because of number one, fear. Or number two, not understanding the seriousness of disobedience. Let me give you an example of fear. I don't know why I'm surprised, but almost every year since I've been associated with the Crusaders, something has come up where we have to make a choice honor Jesus or honor men. Often it involves something like a coach who comes to us and wants to coach with us. And he's a terrific coach, a great coach. But he isn't committed to honoring Jesus in the way that we talk about. He's not a biblical Christian. We have folks say they're Christians, but after talking with them for a while, we can recognize that their view really isn't biblical. Uh, a lot of people are Christians in name. They, they name the name of Christ because that's, that's the society that we live in. We're looking for those who are committed to living their life from a biblical perspective. That's exactly what manhood in action is about for men. Fear moves in, tries to keep us from doing what's right and honoring Jesus. You know, when you have a guy sitting in front of you, and he's a terrific coach and actually a good fellow, The fear, we don't want to confront that person and have to say, to say, no, you can't coach. It's anxiety producing. It seems like the human being right in front of us. But Jesus is far, far away. And so it's so much harder because there sits the guy right here and, and we just don't have the presence that we know that Jesus is there. We're embarrassed to deal with the issue. Fear makes cowards of us all. And so what happens is sometimes we are challenged to make a, a poor decision. But as far as I know, the Crusaders have always chosen Jesus over men. 
always done that. The second reason we don't follow Jesus' commands is our lack of understanding the seriousness of disobedience. Uh, I think we think in terms of society, we think in terms of white lies. There is no such thing as a white lie. It's either a lie or it's not a lie. It's a sin or it's not a sin. And a white lie is a sin. Most of us have a code that we live by. The odd thing is we can't even live up to our own code, much less God's code. Our selfishness causes us to rationalize that break, breaking the code is okay. How, how is that? Give me an example, Coach. Okay. We know we shouldn't lie, but it's easier to lie at times than to tell the truth. You know that Geico commercial where Abe Lincoln's wife asks him if she looks fat? You know, and he goes, a little? Well, the truth is, he doesn't want to say that. To his credit, he was at least honest, but he's in the doghouse for a long, long time. We shouldn't look on lust, with lust on women, but we rationalize that it's really not that big a deal. You know, we're just... We're just checking them out because uh, it, it's an art form. No, no, it's wrong. It's sin. Maybe we steal materials or even time from our employer, but we re reason everybody does it. Or I'm only doing a little of it. Well, that's still sin, men. It's still not honoring to Jesus. In Pursuit of Holiness, in the book Pursuit of Holiness, Jerry Bridges points out that for many people, their real aim is not to sin very much. You see, that is not how you honor Jesus. It's not to not sin very much. It's not to sin. To Jesus, it's just plain old sin. It's disobedience. It's not following his commandments. It's not honoring Jesus. It's time for us as Christians to take responsibility and obey his commands. It is not about our victory. It's about obedience to Christ. You see, obedience is God-focused, whereas victory is self-focused. I'm worried about myself and my victory. The way to get to victory is if we focus on not being disobedient to Jesus. That's how we get victory. Following Jesus' commands should be much easier as we focus on what he has done for us. One of my favorite quotes is this. It says, I follow Jesus not out of obligation, but out of appreciation. And that is precisely how and why I follow Jesus. I am so appreciative of what he has done for me. I am so appreciative of the death that he paid on the cross for my sin, not his sin. So it's easy to follow him. I'm not obligated to follow him. I am appreciative. I am thankful. Wow. Honoring Jesus is really important to God, too, by the way. In John 5, 22 and 23, the Bible tells us, For not even the Father judges anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son in order that all may honor the Son. Pretty clear. Even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. It is important to God that we honor Jesus. And the scriptures warn us about fake honor. In Isaiah 29 and 13, the scriptures say this, This people draw near to me with their words, and they honor me with lip service, but they remove their hearts far from me. And their reverence for me consists of tradition learned by rote. Wow, I don't want to be accused of paying lip service to honoring Jesus. May those words never describe any of us. Today I want to close with this inspiring story which epitomizes honoring Jesus. It tells about the American missionaries who went to evangelized the Aka Indians. The Aucas were a fierce tribe in Ecuador. In fact, my understanding is that they were man-eaters, um, cannibals, if you will. Nate Saint was the pilot. That was his name. Jim Elliott, Pete Fleming, Ed McCulley, and Roger Yudarian were the other missionaries. Man, I actually get goosebumps when I read this story. 
These men flew to where the Aka Indians were on January the 3rd of 1956 after much, much prayer. Their wives were back at the mission camp. They had a rifle. They took a rifle with them, but they had decided to not use it if they were attacked because it would set back the Aka's ability to trust missionaries who came in the future. That was their recognition. On January 8th, 1956, the members of that party, of that missionary group, were killed without putting up a fight. But that doesn't end the story. God is remarkable. By 1958, that's two years later, guys. By 1958, Betty Elliott, Jim's wife, and Nate Saint's sister, Rachel, were actually living among the Aka Indians, who one by one were putting their faith in Jesus Christ. Nine years later, nine years later, two of Nate Saint's children were baptized on the beach where their father had died by two of the men who had killed their father, who had turned to Jesus Christ. In college, Jim Elliott had written this, He is no fool who gives away what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Mission accomplished. Rest in peace. John 12, 26 gives us a wonderful picture of our reward and those who honor Jesus. It says, If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall be my servant also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Jesus is in heaven. That's our reward, men, for following Jesus. Hey, be proactive this week. Honor Jesus. See you next Saturday, Lord willing, and the creeks don't rise.